Hey everybody, Dive Harden here. I am back doing a Monica review, this time on Mobile Suit Gundam's Gundam Aerial from the Mobile Suit Gundam The Witch from Mercury, a series that came out back in 2022 during its fall. Was it fall? I'm pretty sure it was fall. And then released back, finished, I think it finished up last year. And was its model kit, the first of the, okay, not first of the Gundams, because the pre its predecessor, the Lift Wrist is technically the predecessor for it. I do not have that model kit. I do have the, uh, it's upgraded version, the Aerial Calibre and the uh, other Aerials. Uh, I'm still looking for that model kit. I will get that model kit eventually later on. Uh, but without a way, this is the Gundam Aerial with everything it comes with. And here's everything the Gundam Aerial comes with, which is basically not really that much, as this is basically the basic uh, Gundam Mario when it comes with. It doesn't come with his uh, booster attachment, which does come later on as a separate option set, but it comes with its beam fit, its beam rifle, which is pretty nice. Its shield, which basically turn uh, take apart, which we'll see later on the review. Basically, the shield actually uh, dissembles and becomes funnel, so... All this piece all attached onto the aerial, basically protects her and all that, and it's basically just funnel system. And with one particle effect part. Along with that, we have two beam sabers in the back. From the Gundam Mary, which I forgot. I've been lately I've been forgetting about beam sabers on a lot of my Gundams. But we got two beam sabers that attach onto it. That's pretty much the air, everything the area comes with right now. Okay, folks, let's go with yeah, the articulation of the Gundam Aerial. I will say, a little bit side note, when it comes to the um, Gundam Aerial, as this is, go this is going towards a lot of the G-Witch kits, um, they are all on plastic on plastic, meaning there's no polycaps at all. There is no more polycaps. So basically, no more rubbers, it's just plastic on plastic. So it's basically uh, hard plastic on plastic, which is not bad. Makes it a little bit much more better, makes some of the kits... A little bit more sturdier. I'm not a fan of what's it called plastic on plastic. I kind of like polycaps because a lot of times, a lot of these, well, personally for me, uh, it's a little bit hard and sturdy. Yes, it makes it much more durable. Sometimes they break off. And with all the polycaps, a lot of the repair work when you do when you're trying to do repair work is kind of annoying. It's not that bad, but that's all my only preference. I really don't hate that too much, uh, but overall. So good build and articulation, but out of that way, let's go with the actual articulation. So out of the way, we spin the aerial's head and go 360, as you can see right here. Pretty nice design. Go back and forth, no problem at all. See the little design. You can see the detail work of the Gundam aerial. Pretty nice. I did. I will say when it comes to the aerial, I did do a little bit of painting, as this did have a sticker on it. I decided to paint that the. Um, metallic red or whatnot that was on there just because i really did not really care for the sticker i think it had a sticker pretty sure, sure it did same thing with the back here uh what's it called i painted that so that's emerald painted using gun the mark uh metallic uh emerald gun marker so there are some things i did paint mainly on the head module same thing with the eyes same thing with the eyes here uh this is actually one of the kits where I decided to use gun the markers to paint it all. So let's go. Not all the way. Some parts I still use the stickers that are like on the shoulders. I still use its stickers. No problem at all. Oh, what's it called? It's got articulation. Shoulders. Actually, one of the things I do like, I'll give the aerial. At least for preference wise. I do like it has like those separate mobile shoulders, kind of like how IBO has it. Kind of wish a lot of model kits have it. Kind of like the Axio has its own. Because sometimes there's some model kits when you're watching the anime and stuff. Specific, specifically the Bill Fighter series, where they have like shoulders not mounted to the arms and it's detaches and it's like, and but and when you get them in real life, it's like yeah they don't do that. By the way, shoulder can lift off on its own, so it can detach on its own, which is pretty nice. Arm can move all the way up, it can go all the way there, it can bend all the way there, it can bend all the way there. This is a pretty sure the single joint. Uh, just the only thing you gotta be careful with is this thing sometimes pops out when you're moving it. Kinda had the experience a little bit when I was trying to uh, attach the whole shield thing. Dang, some parts kind of fell off. <laughs> kind of glad I found them. The new builder setup is actually really helping me. How was this? Wrist arm. The wrist arm can spin, no problem at all. Bending's pretty fine. Uh, once it's cold, it can rotate around, no problem. 
uh, torso chest piece, the face, uh, for a lot of people that don't know, the you know, arrow kind of has like a face right here, kind of reminds me a little bit of Gurren Lagann a little bit, it also has that new weird injection um, uh, internal design, this is a sticker that goes onto the clear plastic piece, it is a weird thing, the way it's installed, took me a bit to get it as the sticker part actually attached onto it like fat, uh, face forward, Kind of wish I had the manual to show you because I think it's a weird design. Like when you're building the aerial, just read the manual and, and just uh, know what's it called. Be careful with it because I got used to it. Another thing too was the aerial on a little bit some part of this. This plastic piece right here. Sometimes when you're moving this part and so and a little bit, it kind of pops off when you're like messing around with this. It's, I've had this problem, but so far I have not had it anymore. So that's a yay part. So that's a little bit fixed. So just be careful; it might pop off. Uh, was out of the way the area can spin around as its torso is actually a little bit more different. I can do its ab crunch, no problem at all. Let's see there, then it can do its splits, which I think we've seen. We've had at least some monitor reviews where it's not able to do splits, it's able to do splits, and Gunna Mario can do splits, no problem at all, which is a yay thing. I have the shield attached on here, god damn it. But splits, I can do them. Now let's go back. I could do side skirt, the front skirt, which is a tiny front skirt, but it's tiny side skirts. So no problem at all. It's able to do all splits, no problem at all. It's able to go all the way there without hopefully breaking the side skirt. It's able to go all the way back, kind of. Because of the way it's designed, it's a little bit more. Can't go all the way back, which is actually kind of sad. Weird. I could bend all the way up, which is fine and dandy uh once it's cold let's go with the uh, articulation you can bend all the way which is actually not pretty which is actually pretty nice compared to other mobile suits so it's kind of like kind of like a joint hip system which actually makes it go up and down to be able to bend all the way which is actually pretty nice considering thing considering other model kids can't do this uh it's feet no problem uh sadly no side i can't rotate side to side like some other model kids I can go up and down. It's its feet are able to move around independently, which is actually pretty nice. Uh overall. Great model kit. Articulation is pretty nice overall. A little bit sturdy because it's still it's a model cap not played around with. Uh but let's actually go with a little bit of the gimmick right here, which will be uh the shield and funnel. So be right back for that. Okay, folks. Now we go to the the bim bam boom, the shield, which is pretty nice. Now we're gonna put now this shield right here. You're gonna see it's gonna go, and we're gonna disassemble it. Okay, folks, we're back, and now we have the shield now disassembled. All that's left of the shield is a little piece right here. We'll probably be able to attach. Actually, it's not gonna be able to attach this piece anymore since it's not gonna be useful towards this. So now let's attach the area with its pieces. So first things first, attach the shoulder pieces. They see right here onto the shoulder. Ooh, that already starting to go disassemble. Why are you disassembling? No, put it back. And I'll, I'll work on you later. One piece there. One piece over here. Sorry about this. Like I said, about the manual, I'm actually trying to, I'm actually have like a picture of the back in front of this side by side. Trying to remember how this actually got put, got put around. This little piece right here. This little piece right here gets attached to the left side of the forearm, as you can see right there. As this is basically designed, basically it's a whole funnel system for the aerial to be able to protect itself. This piece right here goes onto the right side of the arm. Right, you can see right there. Attachment. I actually really do like the design with its funnels. I actually kind of prefer it. Now I'm actually kind of looking at the picture with its funnels uh, detached from itself. Then we have the two side ones, which go side by side. I'm assuming this one goes to the right side. Right there. Just goes that way. And this one over here goes towards the left side. As you can see right there. No problem at all. Ooh, nice. We're almost done. Now we just got the back piece, which I'm assuming we detach. As it's a peg piece right here, just mentally to hold the shield and well, not shield the rifle. So now we attach the back the back flat piece right here. No problem at all. Boom, now reattached. Uh, how does this go? 
Okay, so this goes right here. The piece right here goes right here. Ugh. Like I said, this thing's very sturdy. Uh, still kind of new. Uh, and then we have the final piece, and boom. Now we have the aerial and its shield and its full funnel system. Ready to fight any enemies it comes with. Which is actually not pretty bad. Okay, everybody. And this is basically the uh, end of the review for the aerial. Uh, funnels are put on. It really looks goddamn nice. I'm really am actually enjoying it and loving it. Looks beautiful and all that. Beam reference with the beam effect is pretty nice. Uh, a little bit on the TLDR. Or not TLDR. A little bit, um... Disclaimer, I have no clue if this thing came with beam sabers or not. I had to go and fish up, um, I think it was the Ashtray Red Frame and Versions beam sabers, because that thing came with two. And, uh, steal one of its beam sabers to put on the Ariel's, uh, 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 hilt for its beam blades. Uh, but what's it called? Um, but it looks pretty nice. Whether or not this thing comes with its own beam sabers, it may. But I'm probably wrong. I don't remember. I actually have to find it yet. Ariel's manual and see on that, but regardless, it's all looks fine. What's called, you've been building the hobby for like a long time. You probably have a surplus of beam savers by now. I know I do. I have like a billion beam savers <laughs> around. Uh, but overall, Gundam Ariel review was pretty nice. Really love the design. Um, I'm still not a fan of basically model kits that are just uh, without poly caps, but that's just me. I prefer them on my model kits. It's a little bit less sturdy. Eh, it becomes less sturdy. I mean. A little bit more on this. This is more sturdy. It doesn't, it doesn't flubble around like other model kits as polycaps are. Uh, still nice design-wise. I actually really do like the aerial. I kind of... I will probably build the rest of the aerial units that I do have later on. Uh, because I want to put side by side between the rebuild and the Caliburn. And maybe eventually find myself uh, the Lipfrist units. Which I gotta find. Uh, but what's it called? But yeah, that is the review. Uh... I do apologize, I'm a little bit more out of it, or a little bit razzle on this. It's been a while since I've done review review. As you can see, I have a whole new setup. Way better than I had it before. I have new desk, new mats. I model kits are all uh, paced around, posted around. And the setup's working well. I'm a little bit sad because the camera that I initially bought did not pan out as I wanted to. At least when I'm saying that, it's like it's not focusing as, as much as I want to. Uh, so I'm going to be keeping the phone cameras. I actually found a pretty nice uh, holding system for it. So I don't have to deal with the primitive uh, holding system I had for my camera before. Uh, the camcorder that I did bought, I'm still going to use it. It's all good. Just I'm probably not going to use it for model kit reviews. Cam, my phone actually does a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, that is the model kit review for the Gunner Mario. Uh, thanks for watching. I have no clue what I'm going to be uh, reviewing next. Oh, right. Actually, no. I do know what I'm going to review next. It's another model kit that's on the shelf builds. So this is also going to... Now it's going to be another rambling one. It's going to be on the uh, Gurin Mark II. Because I've been on a Code Geass binge. And I was going to do a review on the Gurin Satan uh, Time and Nation figure. Because I have yet to build a model kit. Have that model kit still on the on the back burner. It's there on the builds, but I got some thirty minute minute missions kits that I got to build before that, and an amazing Ren warrior. I'm pretty sure. I need to go back on who's on top of who on the box on the on the boxes. Uh, but with that out of the way, this part signing out, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good day, folks.